Hello and uh, welcome to Finance Friday. <laughs> we're coming at you live at Inside Production Studios here in Phoenix, Arizona. And for the next 30 minutes in the lunch hour, we're going to be talking about money and about building your wealth. My name is Robin Morales from RCO Network. Good people, better business, discovering the best of you. And my co-host from the college group is... Francisco Ayala. Thank you for having <laughs> me back. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. We'll be taking questions here live. If you type in those questions and comments in the comment section below during the broadcast, we will answer them as they go along. But please give those hearts as you see anything you love or you hear anything you like. Uh, we love the loves, of course. So we're here at Friday. Um, must be Friday because I'm wearing my golf shirt. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, that's right. You hit, you hit some, you hit the back nine this morning, bright and early. No, nah, I just wore a golf shirt. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the golfer. I'm, what I want to get in there at some point. Um, so we're, we're here uh, again on a Friday lunch hour, hoping to catch people as uh, they're kind of making plans for the weekend and uh, talking about money. I mean, what else are we going to talk about on Friday? Right. That's that's really the only thing to talk about, right, is how, how to uh, how to make more of it, right? That's what everybody wants to know, how to make more money. That's, that's, that's all that you hear about nowadays. Uh, well, and those stock tips, so I'm still waiting on those. Right? <laughs> those stock tips, right. I'll, I'll, it's it's going to come at the end of the show. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you long or short on Bumble? What, what, what's your uh, what's your take on that one? Uh, Bumble. <laughs> man. It's Valentine's Day, man. It's Valentine's weekend. Yeah, I guess. You know, if you want to be long on it for the weekend and then short it, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, being when everybody starts uh, getting those divorces or whatever, having those <laughs> fights, yeah. Yeah, if, you, if you don't do well on Sunday, then you're probably getting a divorce. You're probably on Bumble, which is well. Know. Actually, was well, actually that might be a good idea, though. That might be a good investment because now now they are going to go to Bumble to get the new one, right? Now they're going <laughs> to recycle their partner, so now they're going to be in Bumble. So, is that a, a financial tip or? A... <laughs> <laughs> so, back uh, by I, science, uh, but back by <laughs> fundamentals. You, you heard it here first. So, so uh, if everybody doesn't know, I uh, Bumble IPO'd yesterday at forty three dollars, and now it's trading at about seventy something. Last time I checked, it's probably up to eighty now. Um, it's and yeah. you know, given markets the way they work, it's probably be sold off. You know, around the eighty five mark, and then on Monday it'll go down to like forty again. So that's what I'm hoping. Hoping for the it, forty I mean, mark on Monday. It, it, <laughs> you you saw with a couple of you know of you know years ago now, but Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that, where they had a pretty big rise in the beginning. Took a fall for a while, you know, thinking there's no way this company is going to do whatever they're projecting it's going to do. Uh, and then it turned back around. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it happens. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably what you just said is probably right. <laughs> yeah. It's so interesting how a company is formulated basically on a subscription platform. There's really no commodity sold. I mean, if love was a commodity, I guess it's, it's Bumble. So. Right. Well, right. Who would have thought? <laughs> so Bumble is a, a deviation away from where we're coming out today. So uh, the first 10 minutes uh, of the show today are dedicated to more of like a global perspective on what's going on in the economy. You know, I did find something interesting this week. Um, I just wanted to share it with you guys. You see my, you see my huge water bottle though? Look at that. So, Costco size. What, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Frank? Uh, uh, does that correlate with your uh, wealth? Uh, the bigger the bottle, the bigger the... Well, yeah. the more water, you no, know, it's the more water you drink. Uh, it could be a small, small water, but oh, okay. That, that works too. Anyway. <laughs> so I did find something interesting this week. Um, it does sure. correlate a little bit with our um, uh, general economy. Um, the Fed chair uh, announced this week our, our uh, unemployment rate is about 6.3%. Um, mm -hmm. However, <laughs> it is probably closer okay. to 10%. If you notice here, Despite unemployment rate falling to 6.3, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that unemployment picture is a long way from where it needs to be. That's, um, uh, you know, this isn't something that was published necessarily. I mean, this was published on CNN, but uh, I didn't watch, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm one that watches a lot of YouTube and gets a lot of information on that. But this was something kind of like shoved under the rug a little bit. And, um, and, I, and I think for a, the bigger purpose, um, you know, this happens in the media a lot. They try to I believe mask what's really going out there for whatever either political or financial gain. But uh, the the Fed chair basically said that the unemployment's looking closer to ten percent. But you know, let's stay focused. So uh, right, and that and that's a concern. I, I don't know uh, um, how that correlates back to you know wealth, but it is um, obviously something a concern for somebody who's investing or who wants to be a long term investor, and or you know those. Yeah, you know, I mean so. I think the, the big takeaway there is 
we saw a big dip in the market, you know, last year with, you know, the coronavirus and stuff like that, yeah. but that dip quickly went away. Right. I mean, we, it was a matter of months and we were right back at it to where we started and then some, right. And now we're still at, at, at uh, above that level. And so the, you, you start to put, you start to get fundamentals under that. And how can, how can those, um, numbers in the stock market and as you try to go wealth and stuff like that match to what's really going on in the economy which is what you're saying right is um an employment is still high uh businesses are still closing businesses are struggling um people are still getting laid off and and so there's still a lot of uncertainty um uh, you know even with the coronavirus i mean yeah we have the vaccines now and uh, a lot of improvement there but how long is it going to take to get everybody and the people that are not going to get vaccinated and is, is, is there's still a lot of uncertainty, I think, there, right? And so the unemployment rate being one of them, being one that we're not we're not where we're used to, you know, where we were at just just 18 months ago, you know, or, or something like that. And so why why are people basically looking past this? Why is the market looking past this? You know, why they're saying, oh, okay, but unemployment six, ten, I don't care, you know, I'll, uh, we're going to push it higher. And so I, I think that that's uh, two things really there. One is that, yeah, they're looking past it. They're saying, yeah, well, it's six now, it's 10 or whatever, but we're gonna get back to where we were in a few months, probably, or next year, or even two years from now, but we're gonna get there. And the other thing is the Fed itself. You know, the Fed is saying, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna do whatever it takes. You saw the little note there that, of what he said. He said, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna have keep low rates as low as possible. Um, for foreseeable future and we're going to do whatever it takes. And so people say, hey, uh, they call it the Fed put, you know, that the Fed is going to step in and do whatever it takes to keep the, the markets up. And so, yeah, I mean, I, I, when the fundamentals are kind of deviating more and more from the markets, you know, as, as time goes by. So whether that's healthy or not, who knows? Well, and to point that out, I, I wanted to bring a chart into it a little bit here. I'll get a deviation from what's being published to what's reality. So the difference between the stock market, which is what everybody's seeing, the sexiness of like he's high gains, you know, we'll talk about Elon Musk in a minute. Um, he just spent uh, $1.5 billion in Bitcoin, right. and, and that kind of brought some stir in the market. But this is what reality is. This is where we're at right now. And on this chart that I'm showing you, we have GDP compared to uh, debt. And where we're going isn't, if you looked at this and you're looking at your wallet, basically, if you're sitting down with your husband or wife or spouse or whoever it is that you do finance with, uh -huh. and you're like, hey, this is how much we're making. This gray line is how much we're making. And then this is how much debt we have. You know, there would be some cause for concern. You know, how, how do we save a little bit of money to pay this off? Because uh, we're, we're still not making as much as, you know, we, we were you know, um, or at least we're not making as much as we are to pay off this debt. And um, it, it right. is concerning, you know, and this drives a lot of emotions, especially if, you know, you're in, um, uh, when we've talked about this before, it drives your behavior. So your emotion and your emotional state will drive you to make some time, some frankly, stupid decisions. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that too, about uh, the, the, the emotions of investing and, and things like that. I think that what, what the Fred approach is doing, though, is when they look at the debt versus the GDP, yeah. is that they can get they can inflate their way out of it. You know, a lot of people for, for a lot of especially some, you know, we're getting into politics now, but especially for some <laughs> conservatives that they feel that this is just, uh, you know, blasphemy of having of having to go into uh, so much debt and, and, you know, not caring about future debt and what's this going to do to our future children and, you know, what the, the problems that they're going to inherit monetary and fiscally. Uh, yeah. But they, uh, the, the, the Fed can really inflate their way out of this, you know, uh, th that's something that, uh, that people, a lot of people don't understand is that, yeah, they're, they're throwing a lot of that, that out there, but if they can increase inflation, um, then that debt uh, stays level, right? That was, those interest rates are, um, that, they, they're, that they're borrowing at stay fixed, right? And so if they increase inflation and they're able to generate more revenues, then they don't need, you know, the, the, those, those payments stay fixed, but they're generating more revenue with inflation, they can pay it off easier. And so that's a lot of, a lot of economists see is they say, well, it's not that concerning yeah. because um, 
that they can fight the way out of it. So for example, like putting it into a, an, into a household picture, they say, yeah, you do have, you know, a whole bunch of debt and you're making this, this amount of money. And right now you're scared, but what if you knew that your, your in- income is going to keep on going higher and higher and higher, yeah. right? Does the debt concern you at that point? Well, not so much, right? Because you know that those incomes are going higher and higher and higher, and you'll be able to manage it a lot better then. That's kind of what the, you know, what the, what the Fed is doing is, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll manage it later. Now the question becomes, what if it doesn't, right? Yeah. What, if, what, what if your income doesn't go up? And when that's, so it's probably a good segue here yeah. of do people lose faith in the government? Do people lose faith in the Fed? and they'd be able to manage all this. And so where do they go from here, right? Go to Bitcoin, they go to cryptocurrencies, they go to that kind of stuff, so. Well, since you're segueing into that. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect segue. I I did wanna (laughs) highlight one thing um, on here. There was a chart here. This is regarding our dollar, our purchasing power. And you'll Mm -hmm. notice over time, our purchasing power, Mm -hmm. since we got got into a fiat uh, economy. And again, if you guys don't know what fiat is, think of, uh, I would say fake. Uh, Because it's not uh, a fiat dollar is backed by nothing, you know, and back in, uh, I think, 1946 is when Richard Nixon uh, signed an executive order taking us off the gold standard. So we became 1971. 1971. Yes. 47. Pretty close. Why are you here, Frank? You're here to correct me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so and um so Richard Nixon signed off that we got off the gold standard and since then that's which is what 19 you said 1974. Nine, 19, no. Um, I think 71 is is when is when they 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 unpegged it from the dollar, right? They and ever since then the based on the chart ever since then our purchasing power has just gone significantly lower and lower and lower even even with tax cuts and and some of the things that we're we're seeing our purchasing power has Got lower. This is reflective in in a uh, two household income. You know, this is husband and wife. Back when my grandfather was, you know, still alive and kicking, um, he was the only one working and would buy eggs for you know twenty cents a dozen or something. You know, um, <laughs> you know. But it but it's this is this is a reflection of our purchasing power, um, and this could be a well. I mean, a lot. Well, so that that chart a little bit misleading because. The Fed is actually looking to reduce purchase power. One of the mandates of the Fed yeah. is to keep uh, prices relatively stable, but growing. They want people to, uh, the prices to go up, but not too much, right? They don't want those inflations of, yeah, you know, now it takes, you know, $1,000 to buy a dozen eggs or something like that. But they do want prices going up because what they don't want is they don't want prices going down. Because if, yeah. you, if people, and this is what happened, you know, this happened before, but if people are afraid that prices will go down, that you see those deflationary pressures, then uh, they're not going to buy, right? Because they're saying, we're going we're, we're gonna to wait. We're going to hold on to our money because we know that the prices are going to go down. I could buy it cheaper later, right? Once people get into that mentality, your economy shuts down, right? People are not buying. They're waiting and stuff like that. And so that's a very dangerous thing. So actually, the Fed is promoting, at least to some level, uh, that that purchasing power decline, yeah. okay, and and so uh, that gives you that. But the the other thing is um, a lot of people have been anticipating the demise of the dollar for many years since probably then, you know, since 1971, where it got you know unpegged to the gold because now there's nothing backing it up, and you do see some fluctuations in the dollar, uh, you know, but o- overall the dollar has been one of the strongest currencies uh, since then. Right, if not the strongest oh. currency, I'm not, I'm not exactly sure, but it's been one of the strongest currencies out there because these people still believe in the government, right? Still, still will be believe in the U.S. government versus other economies where oh. you see these, you know, huge devaluations of currency, and now they're, you know, 50 billion bolivars value a grain of rice, you know, and so uh, it's, it's not, it's not all, it's not all uh, doom and gloom. <laughs> As uh, as you'll see, as a lot of people will point it out to be, you know, when you see those charts and oh, it's all doom and gloom and stuff like that. Yeah, there has been expecting the demise in the dollar for a long time. Will it happen? Well, maybe if the people lose faith, lose faith, like I said, in the government. But uh, so far, again, another segue into the <laughs> cryptocurrency. Now, you know, this now they have this crypt- cryptocurrency thing. They're saying, I'm not going to trust the government. I'm not going to trust the, you. You know, they're going to print a bunch of dollars and they're going to deflate the dollar and, you know, I'm going to lose my purchasing power and stuff like that. Where do I turn to? Well, now there's a cryptocurrency 
And now that's the flavor of the week, right? It was the flavor of week, uh, flavor a couple of years ago, went down, and now it's back up. So now we're talking cryptocurrencies. It's not GameStop anymore. It's crypto. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. Uh, <laughs> you did send me an article uh, reviewing it. And uh, uh, can you get rich from Bitcoin? Sure, but slowly. Uh, so in, in here, Elon Musk uh, purchased uh, this last week 1.5 billion in Bitcoin, uh, which if you noticed it on the market this week, um, I'll, I'll pull it up in a second. Um, the stock price for Bitcoin went up from about 30,000 to about just over $40,000 a share. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, and again, it's, it's, the concerning thing is, uh, again, it's a fiat currency. And he pointed that out in his, in his announcement of purchasing that. Again, fiat meaning fake. It's not backed by anything. And mm -hmm. so um, right now, our current dollar is based on faith that it'll be worth the amount it was. And we're not going to have a crash. And I, and I don't like to be all conspiracy and stuff, too, or be speculative. We'll talk about speculation, too. But, you know, we have to incorporate these decisions to, to or at least this information to make decisions on a long term basis. You know, um, I don't have faith in, in anybody but myself. <laughs> and if right, I make a bad I, decision, hey. it's, it's bad on me. You know, hey, you made it that, man. <laughs> don't rely, don't rely on anybody but yourself, man. <laughs> or Frank. I mean, uh, he knows. Oh, or, yeah, you, or you can reach out to me and <laughs> always a helping uh, hand, right? He's a good resource. Um, but uh, I mean, I see, I, I see, like the cost of goods going up. I'm, and it, here, I'll show you this. This is just Arizona in itself. I mean, the overall food index um, is is. A 3.4 percent increase year over year um, from mm -hmm. 2019 to 2020. Food at home, 4.5 percent. I mean, when you see stuff mm -hmm. like that, and um, uh, you know, when people share and say, "Hey, I got a two percent raise at work this year," and you're like, "Well, the cost of goods is going <laughs> up by four, so yeah. I don't know if you're really winning on that point." But we we don't see that because we're so unifocused on what's in front of us at times and uh, looking for ulterior or, or not ulterior alternative uh, ways to invest money. I think is is potential in Bitcoin. The the only thing I'm concerned about Bitcoin uh, or any cryptocurrency is not really backed by anything. At least yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so you're saying that you know the, the dollar is not backed by gold. Okay, well it's fiat currency. Well, fine. Well, so what is Bitcoin backed by? You know, what are you basing that on? You're just basing another again. It's, it's, it's like all, all these things where people, where they don't give you anything. Company, if you invest in a company, yeah. you, uh, and I mean, long-term investment, you invest because they're going to give you something, right? They're going to give you, for the most part, earnings. You're going to get a, a portion of those earnings uh, and the growth that comes from those earnings. But when you invest in the dollar, when you invest in um, the gold or cryptocurrency or something like that, what are you investing in, right? You're investing in the fact that it's going to be there, that it might go up in price, or, you know, it, to me, it's more speculative. We call those, uh, we, we call those types of, uh, of investing uh, the bigger fool, right? The, big, the bigger fool, because basically you're saying, who's going to be the bigger fool to buy it higher than me, right? Um, just like it happened, you know, on, on, on a lot of these recent stocks like GameStop and stuff like that. Yeah. They weren't investing in fundamentals. They were speculating, right? And so it basically just pushed up saying, I'm buying it at 50, so hopefully somebody can buy it at 60. And the people that buy it at 100 said, I'm buying it at 100, so that hopefully they could buy it at, you know, two, somebody else could buy it at 200 and I can sell. And so up and up and it went until somebody said, okay, I'm out. And then, people, you know, that avalanche started. And so... The people that went in, for example, just to give you an example, the people that went to GameStop at 50, and then when it goes up to 100, and then it goes up to 50, were they right for a while? Hell yeah, they were right for a while, and they probably made the money, but were they were they right both times, right? The, at the price to get in and at the price to get out. You have to be right both times, because if you if you wrote it all the way up, and then now you're still you're back at 50, well, well you know, that was just a sweet ride, but that was it. Right. And so, or the, or the poor people that bought at 350 and, <laughs> and now, you know, well, I mean, um, I, I would, I, I don't get, uh, I, I'm not into finance like you are. I don't really review it as much as you are. Would, would you agree that the difference between Bitcoin and our current uh, dollar, the dollar is at least backed by debt? You know, Bitcoin is, is, is paper, essentially. You're buying shares of, of a stock that really doesn't exist necessarily, a company that doesn't exist. Right. But at least the U.S. dollar is backed by the debt that is extended out to it. Well, so it, you can it, at least it, trade it, the debt, right? You can use debt as a commodity, right? 
No. It's well, it's backed. I, I think more by the by the faith in in the, in the U.S. government, right? And that for, for for at least you know, we are a growing economy. We are an co economy that's pretty stable compared to others out there. And so when you know stuff hits the fan, um, the U.S. is a, is a good place to usually uh, is is a good place to kind of park your money because yeah, it's it's relatively stable. So yeah. Um, and, and, and I guess you don't have to answer. I mean, uh, do you have a lot of people or know a lot of people who are investing in Bitcoin or still, is it still a topic of the conversation? <laughs> it, it now it's, it's coming, it's coming back now. So it was, you know, again, 2018, 20, uh, you know, as it went up, you know, people were talking about it, reached a high of almost 20,000. And then it goes to back down to, I don't remember if it was like 5,000 or 8,000 or something like that. But, you know, you, so you stopped hearing it for a while, you know, and that was it. That was the end of Bitcoin. That was a ride. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, now we're back up. So, yeah, I'm starting to see more and more. I know people that, that you know, have gotten at different prices. Some people are doing better than others. Uh, recently, with the run up and stuff, you know, it, <laughs> things are looking good. Oh, here, here, but, here is, here. you know. So, um, let's see. It started maybe, off on Monday. Oh, I, I went back too far. Started off on like. The three-year chart, well, the five-year chart, or something oh, like that, and you'll see. The <laughs> I'll do the one year, <laughs> but see, it's it's down here. Uh, what about a year ago at March? Um, let's go up February. So around February, it's about uh, ninety-six hundred dollars. Right. Um, yeah. Monday, uh, it was at thirty-eight, and then um, uh, Elon Musk announced that he bought all that, so it went up about ten thousand a share. Uh, and and I mean, to be fair, and I think Frank too, I, I think he's he's talking it up and he's going to cash out before all these other people once they see him cash out there you know he's i don't know if he's trying to raise capital trying to raise money just a personal take. well i mean yeah <laughs> so you know that he likes uh, i don't know him personally but he seems like a gentleman that likes a lot of uh you know he's in the game for sure. and you know yeah. yeah and so what his intentions are does he really not believe in the u.s uh does he really not believe in the u.s dollar uh, does he really think that cryptocurrency is a lot uh, safer i have no idea maybe he is just you know playing us all and uh, <laughs> again great the greater fool right you know i'll yeah. buy it here hope with somebody that some fool is going to buy it later uh, for me higher so um well i think yeah, that's the idea too but you know as far as an investment strategy uh, obviously bitcoin or cryptocurrencies is something you should be can you know consider i think if if you're looking at in, in in stocks if you like the sexiness of stocks we talked about that before too um, mm -hmm. if you like that, please talk to your financial advisor or, you know, uh, make an appointment with Frank. He's here to help as well. But, uh, I'm, uh, Robin Morales here with, uh, Frank Yella from the college group talking about money finances and the way things are right now. And so, uh, essentially we've talked about the economy in a large and kind of aggregate perspective. And then we're right. drilled down to kind of cryptocurrencies a little bit, you know, for the last like seven minutes of the show today, um, I'm glad we caught you all in the lunch hour. So if you guys want to leave those comments and questions and stuff for you put for your burritos Frank. down, you know? <laughs> what's, your, what's trending now your chipotle no chipotle is way way back when put put, put something down and oh, you're old <laughs> send school, some you must, you yeah. must be old with your chipotle <laughs> what, what is trending now you know what is what is a good uh, hey, so, so what is that stock tip <laughs> oh, right. what's, what's a good lunch stock to, to invest in subway is subway on there no? so, subway right <laughs> they're still relevant Actually, I don't even know if they're public anymore. I think they had they had taken private. I'm not even sure if they're public at this point, to be honest with you. I don't know. Um, Liz, uh, <laughs> she said she started uh, trading conservatively and gained about 4,000 the last five months. So, I mean, I think that's reflective of the way the, the stock market's going right now. It's just Well, I mean, again, um, is she investing or is she speculating, right? Uh, mm. it, it's hard to call investing when you're doing it for the next two or three years, for two or three weeks or something like that. Right. Uh, it, I mean, can you call it that? I guess. But again, what are you really hoping to get out of it? Are you hoping to get the earnings of the company? Are you hoping to get the growth because of the innovation, because, you know, the new products? Or are you just hoping to sell higher because somebody's going to buy it higher? You know, I, I think that's, that's important for, for the viewers to kind of not kid themselves about it. Right. If you're going to speculate then by all means speculate but know what you're doing you know if you if you're if your intention is to buy something with the hopes that you can sell it later uh to somebody the greater fool that's going to buy it higher from you that's okay i mean a lot of people make a lot of money that way right um 
and, and that's not, I mean, it's just capitalism and that's the way it works. But don't do that and say, oh, I'm gonna buy here and I'm investing uh, because I'll be able to sell it uh, to somebody higher. You know, that, to me, that's speculation. Investing is I'm investing in the company because I believe in the products or I'm just investing in, in, in the economy, in the US economy and all large cap you know, stocks and small cap stocks and international stocks. For example, I'm a big proponent of emerging markets because emerging market stocks, that's where the growth is going to come from in the next, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. The United States is a bunch of old farts, you know, <laughs> uh, for, <laughs> for the most part, demographically, you know, we're a bunch of old farts and so is Europe and, and, and Japan and stuff like that. Emerging markets, countries like Brazil and Mexico and India and uh, China and stuff like that. That's where all the growth is. Right. And so if you take a long term approach to that, then that's kind of you do, you do realize we're becoming the old farts, right? Frank? <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> we're I, getting there. I, feel, uh, I feel it every day, man. Every time, every day I wake up with a sort of knee or something. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. So Liz uh, basically mentioned that she's um, staying away from Bitcoin, uh, investing in gold, silver and copper, which I think right now, even the silver market uh, took a big uh, upswing last week and big upswing. Uh, like uh, you're seeing it in, in a lot of the precious metals, platinum and platinum. Platinum's going and, like crazy. Yeah. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, you know, so that's that's our flavor of the week, and it's, don't worry about it. It's going to be another flavor flavor of the week next week. But again, these are called uh, the 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 bigger fool assets because they, all you're doing is a pet rock, right? If you actually owned it, it's just going to do anything but sit there. It's not going to produce anything. It's not going to produce income. It's not going to produce dividends. It's not going to produce anything. All it's doing is just sitting there, and so all you're hoping for is to be able to sell it higher than what you bought it. Again, bigger fool, and so uh, it's it's a good diversifier. I'll tell you that it's a very good divers diversifier in a portfolio because oh. when when you know it's historically has been shown that uh, when the U.S. stocks don't do well, that those kind of tend to offset the volatility. Now, again, how much do you want of that? How much how much of protection and how much of hedge? If you're going to call it a hedge, how much do you want given your overall portfolio? All that stuff. So uh, I guess a question would be, how big is your pet rock named Bumble right now? <laughs> how much? Uh, how big of a rock do you have in Bumble? This, this is what I say. <laughs> Look, if 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 you wanna if you wanna own oh, all these stocks, <laughs> then just just own the just own the whole thing. You know, own the ETFs, own the S and P five hundred, own the Russell two thousand. All because you're gonna have at least a piece of it in there, right? Instead of saying, oh man, I wish I should have bought it. Well, at least you have something in there. So. I'll have whatever <laughs> I'll have whatever the market has. Oh boy! So we're coming to the end of our show. We got a lot three minutes left. Uh, so the the big takeaways that I wanted to kind of point out, and I know, um, you know, Frank uh, touched upon it um, and talk a little bit more about it is is uh, investing versus speculation, and I think a lot of that is driven by the social media. Um, the hype. Um, I, I believe, like going back to our reference with Elon Musk, I think he's hyping up the price to capitalize on that. And he's just going to dump the stock. I mean, that's what's going on right now. It's just people are hyping up a lot of stocks. Everybody's looking for GameStop, you know, that, that, that quick investment because that's, it's sexy, man. It's, it's like, it's like Vegas on the weekend. It's like, Hey, it's Friday. Right. We're going to get in a car and take off. You know, we're going to go to the lights and glimmer. We're going to make millions. And then you walk home and you're like, Oh shit, I, I have a dollar <laughs> left for gas to get home. Yeah. And you know? The other thing too, is that all these, um, not just in social media, but you see just in regular media, TV and stuff like CNBCs and the you know MSNBCs or or, or whatever it is, uh, they need they they need revenue, right? And the only way that they're going to get revenue is by clicking, is by viewers and stuff like that. So they need to throw stuff out there that is trendy, right? They're not going to care about those you know little companies that are probably great deals, you know, great buys, great investment opportunities, but they're not going to talk about that uh, because there's not, nobody wants to talk about it. They're going to switch the channel or anything like that. So they have to constantly feed you this loop of trendy stuff, of importance, you know, things that are, the things that are going on, the things that they think um, the, 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 the viewers are going to like, and you just, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole loop, you know, of just trying to, trying to get you to click or, or view or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and whatever resource, whatever source you're using to make decisions on financial matters, always look at the, uh, at the reference, you know, look at who's paying for that media, look for, look for who's paying for that publication, because you're going to typically find like, like Robin Hood, you know, that, that was a big reveal and, and who's backing them, you know, Citadel 
um, right. and, and yeah. the situation regarding that. Always look at the source of the information. You know who's who's that who's really in control. You know yeah. who's who's really uh, yeah. driving that train. Who, is there? There's always cons. Oh, uh, almost always conflicts of interest, right? Where they're giving you something, but you know they have some some other underlying motive under that. So yeah, yeah definitely look, look. Do your diligence. All right, Senor. So. We're here at the end of the hour. So uh, thank you for joining us for your lunch break. You know, we're going to be doing this every Friday. You know, for just half an hour between me and Frank with the Citadel group. Um, any last God. words of uh, faith and wisdom? Uh, any stock tips? Was that Chipotle? Chipotle, <laughs> Chipotle Sunday? Was that, was, that, was that the hint? Was that the one we got to, <laughs> we should invest in? Are you paid right. by Chipotle? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I mean, I, I would love to kind of, I would love to get some comments, some 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 questions that you guys might be interested in. You know, uh, just drop them up. You know, drop them to Robert, and uh, hopefully we can uh, answer as many questions and comments as you guys have. Yeah. So if you guys are watching us on the replay, we're going to be doing this live every week on the lunch hour on Fridays. Um, but if again, um, if you have any comments or questions, we can answer them offline as well. Um, any words words of faith, Frank? Any anything we need to go by? Uh, uh, no, like uh, you know, have a great Valentine's Day. Hope you guys uh, oh, yeah. you know, spend it with Valentine's all your loved ones. Day. Yeah, yeah that, that's what we should focus on right now. Yeah, it's, send, it's send us as many heart emojis as possible to celebrate uh, Valentine's Day with us if you're watching us here. So um, I appreciate it, sir. Uh, Frank uh, yes, Yala. Thank you for uh, having me. Frank Yala, Citadel Group, Rob Morales, RCO Network. And we will <laughs> uh, it, ca catch you guys uh, next week. Did you want to say something else, sir? No, Before we go? it was it, it it's the Colorado group, not the Citadel Citadel group. Did I say Citadel? <laughs> yeah. Oh Colorado boy. Group. Okay, uh, give those hearts. <laughs> we'll see you next day, next week. Bye bye.